it's Sarah. I'm back, you guys. I created this little ornament I wanted to share with you, and I'm just so happy. It makes me happy. So I'm sticking with the popsicle stick theme, and these are actually the jumbos. I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're about see, eight inches tall. The other ones I have are not true popsicle sticks either. These are more of a tongue depressor size, so they have a little bit more width. Um, and I'm actually using these stirs. So this is a, another stick size, and it's a, a stir. So it has a little bit of a smaller um, width to it to create that little brim of the hat. So I actually, uh, you know, I walk every other day. I do my three to four miles. Anywho, one of my neighbors has this up in their yard. It's standing um, it has a little stand and it stands at his little light post and when I saw it and it's probably like two by sixes or something like that three boards you know they're, so they're they're tall and they're big um, well maybe like three four feet tall and I thought I can totally make that into an ornament so I felt inspired and I came home and I started playing with my uh, my little sticks here so these I completed today this one I just kept it super simple. Basically, I have all this rickrack. You guys, my desk is such a mess, but I'm trying to pull from my stash, just pull what I have and work with it. So um, this one, like again, I, this is not a true popsicle stick size. It's a tongue depressor size. So it's a little bit, it's about three quarters of an inch wide. Um, I don't have, let me just see if I have, um, there's little two and a half inch ones that I made the um, I don't know where I put them I think they're over here hold on I just want to show you the uh, here they are the difference in width just so that you can get an idea I know a lot of you guys like to have the exact dimensions of things look I'm winging it I'm using what I have so this isn't actually a true it's only two and a half inches tall but it's a true popsicle stick size. This is the tongue depressor size. So just picture this taller. And then these are the jumbos. So this is eight inches tall. All right, so that's the difference. I mean, I'm sure you could make this with these little guys too, but I wanted more room to paint. And so the bigger, the better for me. And I got to create and add lots of different trims and things that are a little bit bigger. Um, I mean, I think I could probably have fit those little hollies on here, but they were a little big. So I just put a little bling and I painted the, um, I, I used the Rick Rack and just painted. So this is super simple. I put a little snowflake button. Well, it's like a flat back. And so use what you have, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did this real quick. Um, you're going to need three, and I'm going to use these jumbo size ones. And in this case, they're going to be, the center one is seven and a half inches, and the other two are six and a half inches. So just so you get that kind of variation, um, this guy is going to be the tallest, and then those two are a little bit shorter. So let me measure these out. Um, three, four, five, six, seven. And it's basically the size of the popsicle stick. I just cut off the rounded part because they have little top hats on. So I want to make that straight. And then these are going to be six and a half. So right to here, approximately. Don't worry about perfection. It's progress, not perfect. No, that's a slogan from something. Anywho, um, have these little, this is Joe's, and I think it's just your basic wire cutter type tool, but again, this is wide, so I just like kind of give it a squeeze, and then flip it, and give it another squeeze, and then start to, so if you score it with them, it works better, so I don't try to get it all in one crunch. I have, because <laughs> that's just my, you know, middle name do it all in one crunch. Um, then I'm going to give it a really easy sanding. Not a big deal. Just because, you know, you don't want it to look too um, uh, ragged. 
All right, so let me just get this out of the way. And then the little stirs, I'm saying stirrer. It's like a stir, a stir stick, right? A swizzle stick type thing. You're gonna do, these are one and a half inches because the sticks are an inch. I have a quarter inch room on each side, size. So just cut them down. Again, I just measure it one and a half, one and a half, and do the same thing. This basically just will cut it. You just go boop, oops, and make sure you don't poke yourself in the eye. All right, so I have three of those, and I'm gonna get out, oh, first let's sand. Now, a lot of you guys had made the comment on my other, my previous popsicle stick video, that we you could paint these little brims of the hats before you glue them on. Very good idea. I still, end up touching it up so I just glue it all together um, and I paint that, that's it I don't mind just going back and forth so I'm just going to give these a little sanding and I actually like to round it a little like not keep it flat because it gives it more of a round feel I don't know um, so in, in other words the hat is actually round so when you look at that little curve at the top of the hat, it makes you think of a rounded top. I don't know. Because I could paint it so much more dimensional and realistic, but it's a cutesy little thing. Don't get crazy. Or do what you want. <laughs> I don't mind. What the heck? I just love, I want to share this with you guys because this is so easy. All right. Um, I've already painted. Oh, well, let me show you how to glue it first. That's what I want to do. All right, let me see if these are, yeah, like, see, there's little, just get the main little splintery bits off. But other than that, it's good. Um, that's the little brim, and then this one. Okay, so I am going to use my weld bond. This is what I wanted to show you. All right, so where's the tallest? He goes in the center, and then one goes underneath and one goes on top. So that's how you're gonna glue them. I'm gonna use my weld bond. Just use a strong glue, a strong wood glue. There are lots of them on the market, I'm sure. So I just put a little blop right there. And that's a very, um, you know, it's a, that's a word all right, blop. So put a blop. Um, so you're gonna go, if, if this one's on the middle, you're gonna go over two inches. That's how I kind of do it. So I kind of hold this here and then I go over two inches and then I kind of just wiggle it on. Kind of wiggle it on until you start to feel it grab. And I'll get some ooze, but that's okay. I will get it off with a Q-tip, my favorite tool. Can't go wrong. And you have a little wiggle room, literally, literal wiggle, wiggle room. And then I'll just like look at it from the bottom and make sure I can, I like to keep it even. And I'll go back and take another measurement and make sure I can move it over a little. And then basically it'll start to really set up. Um, so I'm just going to put something under here, whatever. It's pretty much setting up right now. Like this is gonna be sticking very soon. Um, put another blop, it's a very professional word. And then go ahead and put, do the same thing. So just kind of wiggle it into place because that spreads the glue and um, starts to get it to adhere. And then, oh, okay, I can put that under. See, I'm doing that just because this is now up a level. All right, so see, this is straight. This comes over to two inches, so let's get this over to two inches. And I'm giving it real good pressure now. So basically, these two little guys are, you know, it's approximate. But it, it just, it'll be more pleasing to your eye if there's some um, evenness to it. All right, let's see. That looks pretty good. Oh. 
think it's over tights. A tights. That's another one of my professional words. Tights. Okay. So that it should be it should be pretty stuck right now, but you know, it really needs to set up for I don't know, like an hour. So you're gonna do the same thing with your um, the brim of the hat. And I haven't measured at all when it came to the brim of the hat. Some of them are taller and some are, see, look, like this one's kind of taller. This is the tallest, then tall, then short. I like that. I think they all got their hats somewhere different. <laughs> so, and I am using um, Tracy Moreau's little jaunty kind of just tip to the edge. Just tip it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. It kind of looks like it's... Um, and just that wiggle, I kind of measure, just make sure there's a quarter inch um, hanging off both sides, because that would bother me if it, if it wasn't. Um, you know, do what your eye likes. That's a, you know, as a rule of thumb, I eyeball everything, and I do it to how it pleases my eye. And that's how you can show your creativity. Because you might think of something I don't think of. And I want you to have your process and have your um, create creativeness. It's, it's your project. So I'm just showing you how I did it. And then I want you to run with it and do your thing. And I get most of my ideas from everyone else. Like I play off a lot of times something I've seen already and then I just get so excited when I create it myself oh my gosh Matthew was here and I was just like singing in here and I was oh man I was so happy this is my serenity seriously you guys duh I mean I know it's my serenity crafts but like creating I've discovered is it's kinda like my my spiritual connection like my um, divine thing. I'm telling you. I, I, I know you know what I'm talking about too. Those of you who create. And it, it brings out our inner soul. Our soul comes out when we create. I believe that. Alright, so I am going to let that dry, but that's it. So now you've created your little snowmen to do with as you please. I'm going to set that aside and let it dry fully. Let me just take off this little blop. I've already base coated this one because I just wanted to skip that step so that I, because I make such long videos. Guys, it's not, you know, I always say this, it's not rocket science. <laughs> I wouldn't be on here doing rocket science. So basically, I took um, light ivory and the hats I did with graphite this time. I didn't just go straight black because I want to shade and highlight the hats. Um, for this guy, instead of getting real elaborate like this, I just want to keep it simple. So I pulled some different color um, ribbon that I thought was a nice um, bright color. Look at that. OMG. So happy. Happiness. And then I have other colors that are, I'm sorry, paint colors that are going to match those. And I'm going to just take a liner brush. So basically, I think this is about two coats of each color. Um, the, the light ivory and the um, charcoal. So let's go with this purple. I, I'm just using colors that I have in my stash. This one's called Wisteria. And it's a satin acrylic paint by Apple Barrel that I probably got to do dotting. Excuse me if my head gets in the way. And I'm just going to put this down. And I could, you could absolutely see on this one I glued ribbon. Ribbon, ribbon. I didn't paint any um, accessories on them. I used all my um, ribbons and trims. And buttons, so these are tiny little star buttons, and these are um, black pearls. So we're just going to paint today. Well, 
that's not true I'm gonna put their little scarfs on with ribbon and then I have this pretty blue color these have been out for a minute so I just have to mix a little bit of water just to get them moving again um, and I just lay it down and kind of wiggle it a little guess, guess who's in the basement again exercise Maddie Maddie is getting really fit all right and this pink and I think this is an this is just straight up bubblegum pink I think that was called whispering turquoise let's see what color the blue is just so you know yep whispering turquoise which I don't find that very turquoisey I find it more um, just like a baby blue and I'm flattening out my brush and just letting the brush bristles make that nice line I'm gonna let that dry and I'll come back so we're gonna float guys you know I love to float I'm gonna use to shade this I'm gonna use this color which is a premium satin by craft smart my brush is falling apart um, I don't know why it's a more of a teal but I thought that represented like the shine of snow like instead of doing it um, brown I wanted to just do this so I decided to do that I'm gonna use my angle brush I go into water blot it on a paper towel corner load and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down the right side because well actually on this one since I glued them different if you look this one's on top middle bottom this one's on top middle bottom so all I want you to do is just shade on the side that goes under so that's gonna be it's gonna represent like this one's in front of that one and that one's in front of that one that's all and I am a very heavy hand floater you know you know me I've said so a million times so it's gonna look darker than yours so don't worry it's it's just my style that's my style of painting and I'm trying to dull it down a little bit because I don't really want it to be that dark I just want it to be subtle so I should probably be doing using a smaller brush that can help me because if I have this much room to float, I'm going to float with that much room. So it's just my way. Um, but I think it looks pretty. So I'm not, I don't, I don't care. I love it. I love color and I love, it makes me happy. That's all I can say. So that one was a little less dark or wide, I should say. And then this one, I'm just going to go right down that whole uh, side. I'm going to start right at the bottom and all your bristles need to be on the sea. I ran out of water and so it's kind of sticking. It's not flowing. See if there's no water on your brush you need water to make that slide. Alright there we go. Ta-da! Dang it. That was way too wet and this is a little dark so I'm just taking a baby wipe I'm just gonna take a little off don't mind me but that would be dark over here you know what I mean because it's supposed to look like um, they're overlapping each other then I'm gonna do a little underneath the brim but I'm gonna let my sides dry so for your because I painted the hats with uh, what was it charcoal I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush I'm gonna shade the hats a little bit with black because you'll be able to see it Let me see if my black is still wet nope and this is overkill guys this is overkill but it makes me happy that's why I do it if it didn't make me happy I wouldn't do it but you absolutely don't need this your little guys are gonna look so fine without 
their hats shaded, but I just wanted to. So I'm gonna go above this little strip of pink and just do that above all the different colors. And it kind of, it should indicate that there is a shadow. I don't know, look. Those are, that's for the more artsy artists than me. I'm a crafty artist. I'm gonna put it on the both sides of the brim. So here, I'll do all those sides first. Flip it over and do Guess what? Did you know Ginny is James's dog, my son James? <laughs> and she never barked when James had her for all her life. She's never barked. And good old Kirby, my dog, taught her all about barking. So now she barks really well. I want to do another coat of purple um, I want to yell but I'm not gonna it's okay they're doing they're doing their doggy thing girls girls hey oh my gosh Jin Jin. My goodness. Um, I know that's really not noticeable, that black, so you guys really don't need to do that. But I need to, and I'm going to do even more. I'm going to do some slate gray. And this time I'm going to highlight with that on the hat. <clears throat> So, I'm going to do very thin light float of right here. This color is called Slate Gray. And I don't know, I just thought it would look good and I like it. So we have that and then I'm going to put it right on the... Oh, on the top of the brim too. I could have gone like even like with a dark gray. Let me think. Um, this is charcoal. What was the other color I really like to use? No, graphite. I didn't use charcoal. I used graphite. So I could have used charcoal. Any of those type of like like soft black, something that's not truly black, but I think you get a little bit of an idea. All right, I'm gonna go underneath the brim, and then we're gonna put his little cheek on. Ginny, stop it! Sorry, I had to yell at her. She's not a good listener either, so I'm sure she. Yeah, that didn't work. All right, so I'm gonna go right here. And do it again. Oh, Lord. Something must be happening outside. It's dark here. It gets dark. It's uh, 525, and it's my hubby will be home in a minute, too. All right. I'm loving it. There's a little something there. So that's your basic, like, shading and highlighting okay now we're gonna add some features and I love a dry brush cheek so I'm using a small oh my god I'll be right back all right sorry about that I let them get their barking out of the way my husband came home too but I want to show you this so this is called dry brushing and I'm gonna use true red I just like the color. It's kind of, 
when you dry brush it, it looks pinkish. It's reddish pink. I don't know. I just really liked it. I was thinking a rouge or something, but they're snowmen. They don't need fleshy colors. They need bright colors. So this is a specific kind of brush, and it's called a dry blending brush by Silver Cole. Debbie Cole created these. She's a decorative painter who uses dry brushing a lot in her work, and different artists choose different techniques. And uh, so there's several different ways to get this effect, but if you have a dry brushing brush, the key is it's a, it's a stiff bristle. You wanna keep it dry. That's why it's called dry brushing. And basically you're just using the very tips of the bristles um, you don't want to you don't want the paint all the way through and loaded the way I would normally load the brush so I'm gonna take that red which I put out a ton I don't need all that paint and a dry clean paper towel and I'm going to load it just the tip I kind of I'm wiping some off because I'm such a heavy hand so I kind of pounce it in the color and just load the tips of those bristles and then I'm going to take some off because I don't want it wet I want it dry okay that's the key now what I did was I designed it so that some of them these two were looking at the center one so I only did one cheek on each of the side ones and two cheeks on the middle guy. That's what I'm going to do. On my little one, I think I did it a little different. I also like to go in a circular motion. So I'm just going to start. You just put the brush down and kind of scrub on a cheek. And that's looking a little wet or um, scratchy looking because you want it to be soft. And so if you're finding that it it looks like it doesn't look bad it means your brush is too wet so just scrub a little of that wetness off and, tr and try again so I'm going to go right back and I'm scrubbing I'm giving good pressure because uh, I like a nice kind of cheeky cheek okay so that's it except for I totally got it up against this edge didn't mean to do that all right so that's how you scrub on a cheek so cute I just want to keep going now I'm not going to stick this in water I'm going to just get the wetness off as best I can and then I cleaned these with um, you can after you're done working with it you can absolutely just clean it with your whatever chosen kind of soap you like to use on water that's fine but if you're going to be working with it hand sanitizer which is alcohol basically We'll clean this um, without it being wet because the alcohol evaporates. So that's just a little <coughs> trick. Um, all right. So now I am going to put their little faces on. So I'm going to do it the same way we did um, when we did the snowman pin by Tracy Moreau. So I'm going to use black. And I don't like to use a dip dotting tool because I'm trying to make it like a little bit of um, a piece of charcoal or something. I don't know. You can use a dip dotting tool, no problem. So I have a round brush. I think this is like, look, the paint's coming off because I've left it in the water. It's a number one. Number one round. And I load it pretty fully. Now, I told you these two are kind of looking up at the center guy. So I made the back eye the biggest. So I make that kind of decent size. And then I make the front one a little smaller Oops, I didn't really. Because that, I thought, like, kind of gave some perspective. It kind of made it look like he was, I don't know, I did it better on these. See, it looks like they're turned sideways. OMG, I was so excited today. And then this guy, he's just looking forward. So he can have two, two eyes the same size. But I don't want them perfectly round. I kind of, I mean, I want them the same size, but kind of a little jaggly and then for their mouths the same thing I want it to look like they're turned so this one's going to be let's see the biggest and then I'm just going to graduate in size to that way this one's the biggest and then I'm going to graduate like that and I even put a little one there and then the middle guy he's just 
I think they're going to be all whatever kind of size you want. Cute, right? They look weird without their noses. Babe, I'll take my huge. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. We're getting takeout. I love Chili's quesadillas. Um, Maya would laugh at me because I don't say things with the correct accent. The Mexican. My little Mexican granddaughter. Um, anywho, bacon ranch, chicken bacon ranch quesadillas. So good. Um, all right, so for their noses, I'm just going to do it with two different shades of orange. I have burnt orange and a little bit of this. Uh, whoa. This is called pumpkin orange, and it's a gloss paint. I have a lot of these different... Um, what would it be called uh, like shiny or glossy or semi-gloss whatever because I was doing dotting and I like how those different um, shines uh, look with dots so he's looking at him so his nose I like to start kind of like under the eye so I start under the eye and just start wiggling because it's a carrot See, he's got a funny looking nose. And then this one, same thing. He's looking this way. So I start kind of halfway under the eye. And it's the widest over there. And then you kind of stop like that. And then how should I make, I'll make this guy go this way. Because I just can only, I do noses in one direction better. Cute. And then I'm just rinsing. And then I'm going to get on a wet, I'm going to just do it wet on wet. Just take this light color orange and put a highlight on top. I don't know why I just decided to do that and I like the way it looked so that's what I'm going with. Then you need to put a little highlight so I'm going to use the light ivory you can use white. I could actually highlight their bodies too. I didn't do any highlighting because it, it wouldn't show. After I put the glitter and all that stuff on, it's fine. So I'm gonna use uh I'm gonna use my liner brush. That's a little too wide. I want really tiny little dots. Um so I like to use my thinnest little brush and just use the tip of that and put a highlight shine like a little shine and there is a reason and all that but this is cute so don't get caught up in all that stuff and then also a little nice white highlight on the cheek so on both of these cheeks and then this cheek and then You know what else? I want to put eyebrows. I forgot about eyebrows, but I didn't put them on my little um, pins. But I like them. And I, you don't want your eyebrows to go this way because then it'll look angry. You want them up like this, little little curious. And I, you could just put one on these little side guys because maybe you don't see the other eyebrow as well. And then two on him. They're just tiny little eyebrows. And you could put a little eyelash if you want on this one and make it look like the mom. You could put little red uh, highlights on your lips if you want, but I think they need another eyebrow. Let's see. Did I put I put two eyebrows on both of these? Let's see the little one. Where's the little one? Look, I did the one eyebrow on this one. Looks like they're missing an eyebrow. I'm going to add both. I have to have both eyebrows. But isn't he so cute? Oh my gosh, I get so happy. Oh, so happy. All right, so basically, and then you could shade your, which I probably want to do. I really, I'm going to use Payne's Gray and just shade them all. Because that way I don't have to get out a bunch of different colors. Um, I have Prussian blue, but where's my Payne's gray? Um, 
I'm going to shade the ribbon. Now this is just getting carried away as I like to do and I can't find my paints gray. But um, it'll just make the ribbon look a little bit dimensional. So that's why I want to do it. And I can't find my Payne's Gray. Alright, we'll use Prussian Blue. Payne's Gray is kind of like a, um, a purpley dark blue. So Prussian Blue is kind of like that. Let's see what it looks like. I am going to just softly, really soft. Oh, I don't like it. I don't think it's... I'm going to find my Payne's Gray. All right, I hope this has been on the whole time. I just noticed it was unplugged. So look, so here's the Prussian blue right here. Let me zoom in. Right here. That's Prussian blue. This is Payne's gray. So it's like a purpley, dark blue, blackish, I don't know what, but it's not the same as Prussian blue. So I'm going to take this. Where the heck did I just float? I don't know. I couldn't find my runway. Um, I don't want a lot, but wait until you see the difference it makes. So I'm just going to put it with the color to the outside edge. Especially on the blue, because it's a bluey color, but I'll do it on all the colors and it won't look bad purple looks great. It's just that the purple is a shiny color. And then the pink. Let's see how the pink looks. Perfectly fine. So you see, it kind of, and then you could go crazy. You could highlight, you could get, you know, cray cray. All right, so for this one, I really wanted to keep it simple. I'm just going to do the bows. So let me come back up. Not bows, like kind of like a, a scarf, right? So this is not the thinnest ribbon. I have thinner than this, but I'm going to do blue, pink, and purple. So I'm going to tie it all the way around. So I'm going to go under. You know what? First, I'm wrong. I am going to use the Starlight Varnish. Once you're done all your painting, you can varnish. But let me think. I really liked these but I think I might paint some buttons but I did like the stars but I want to keep this one simple I did not put buttons on this because I thought they were too small so now the decision is do I want buttons and that could take me hours to make a decision so I'm not going to worry about it right now but let me see something I think we could put a few buttons. I think it's going to look cute with buttons. Again, I'm just going to use my round brush and some black paint and just kind of wiggle some maybe three for daddy, two for mommy. I'm considering her mommy because of the eyelashes. One, two, and then how about littler ones for him, or just two? That's it. I mean, they're not exactly even, but I like it. Okay, I'm glad. I'm happy I did that. My brush is falling apart. Look, the paint is falling off. It's because you, if you leave your brushes in the water, the water goes up through the wood. Okay. So I'm going to varnish. All right, I'll come back after I'm varnished and I'll just show you how I do the um, scarf. Okay, it's a little tacky, but I think it'll be good. I found these little gemstones and I love them. They're little flower shapes. And because this is not traditional colors for, um, I could do all three with white, but I'm going to do, oh, that one has no bling. Pink. Blue. And I'll glue them on, but I want to look first. Got to look first. And purple. I think I'm going to do that. That's amazing. 
So cute. All right. So what you're going to do, I think it would be smart to put a little dab of glue behind. And I don't know how long I really need these to be. I haven't done this. With the Rick Rack, the Rick Rack kind of um, holds in place really nice because it, um, it has that wave effect to it. So I'm wondering if I should put a dab of glue and hmm I think I'm gonna do it this way you know these aren't as wide as they could be but I think it'll look good it's good enough for right now right um, I could tie bows let's see what a bow looks like don't know but I think I want to go with the scarf look but let's see a bow may be good I'm not an expert bow tire Sometimes they look really good and sometimes they don't. So, I mean, bows could be cute. I think bows could be cute. I would do it smaller. But I also have these big snowflake flat backs. Um, so I'm going to glue this one. This one's kind of cool. It has like a heart thing in the center. I did that on this. I don't know why, I just think it kind of needs a base. But I have so many different accessories, you guys. Like I have ribbons, a ri like a red ribbon could look cute, but this isn't red. Um, like a white maybe, because it's snow. But because it's snowflake, then I have all these. Um, I have Santas, I have packages. But I didn't think it was kind of appropriate. Like I love this tree, but I don't think it, eh. The blue tree could be cute because it's more wintry like themed, right? Do I have different sizes? Anywho, put I'm just gonna glue this little snowflake. Let's just do it. And I use I'm using my weld bond. No, 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 no. This is my Fabri-Tac. I don't know why, but I feel like it's got good adhesion. And it sticks on top of the um varnish because remember we just varnished it and then I just wiggle it into place I just think it's a kind of a like a little finisher right and I do think I'm gonna put these on these have stickiness on them but I'm gonna just put a little um, fabric tack on the back of that too and wiggle that into place I mean it would look cute with a fabric bow too or a fabric flower but I just happen to have these and I don't use them I want to use them. So my next one, maybe I'll put a fabric flower. It could look just as cute. You could just put one little rhinestone. Use what you have. So if you don't have, I just, I went crazy. When I first started doing this stuff, this crafting thing that we do, ugh, I was like crazy with the shopping. Too much. So, do I want it scarfy? Because if I want it scarfy, I would just put a little tab of glue underneath these to let it. I kind of want it scarfy, I think. So, um, that's what I'm going to do. And it would be so cute if you had, like, maybe a thicker. See, I have this thicker. That's really cute. It matches. See, that's what happens to me. I start to, like, I can't stop myself. Oh, it's terrible. I start to go crazy trying everything. You should see my desk right now. It has so many. But that looks really scarfy. Come on. I'm doing this one. I'm doing it. I don't even want to take it off because I don't want to mess it up. But I'm going to... Um, it's going to come apart. Like, you know what you have to do? You have to glue it from behind. So I'm going to put some glue right here. At least it'll stay in place. Slide it up. And stick it down. So now it's not going to, at least it's not going to come off. And then 
I am going to, I really need a little bit of glue right here. I have it and I'm going to pull it and stick. So it's really the front part that I've stuck right now, but at least I know it's not going anywhere. Then this I can cut. And if it wants to go that way, I don't mind. But that looks so scarfy. So I'm going to put a little blob of glue here. That's my word. And I'm just going to stick it like that. Stick it. And then cut it. This one doesn't have a blob of glue. And it's kind of going weird on me. But I like that. Oh, that looks so scarfy. I like it. I kind of should, I should just, oh, I'm folding it. It looks good. All right, I'm going to look for two other, like a pink that's a little more something going on and a blue that's a little more something going on. So I'll be right back. All right, I figured it out. I need my, okay, so look, so I just got a little bit more scarfy looking colors that matched good enough, right? And this one has little bling on it, and I did glue it down. So I just folded it over and just glued one side down. I think I glued both of these down because it was getting crazy. And you can't really see the buttons anymore, but that's okay. They're under there. Um, what was I going to say? Okay, so it's done, but I want to show you how I do the um, hanger. I take a small, like a thinner piece of ribbon, and I like it to be okay so you want it to be flat and connect but you're going to turn it actually this way it it just makes it hang nice on the tree that's my perspective okay so basically let's turn it over i'm going to put it a little blob of glue right there put one end down and then follow the ribbon around. So you want to keep it flat and then put the other end down. So basically this this side of the ribbon stays on the in it's on the let's see it's on the inside. I can't explain it, but it really it really does the trick. And then I'm just going to put like I'll put one of these white flowers right there. And that's it. And don't forget to sign your name. I'm going to sign my name. So excited. I hope you like this, you guys. Um, I'm going to put Sarah Evans 2018. It's almost 2019. And that's it. OMG, look how cute these are. Oh. <gasps> I'm so thrilled with these. All right, I hope you like them. Let me hold it up. Isn't it so adorable? All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.